The branching tree pattern of Darwin's theory is actually not seen anywhere in the fossil record unless we impose it with our own minds. So the Cambrian explosion is the most dramatic refutation of the tree of life. The Cambrian explosion of life was a dramatic episode in geological history. Usually dated at about 530 million years ago, the exquisitely preserved Cambrian fossils reveal that the body plans for virtually every major animal phyla appeared, not gradually and slowly as Darwin had speculated, but instead with astonishing suddenness. If we imagine the whole history of life on Earth taking place in one 24-hour period, the current uh, standard estimates for the origin of life put it at about 3.8 billion years ago, let's say 4 billion. So if we start the clock then, our 24-hour clock, six hours, nothing but these simple single-celled organisms appear, the same sort that we saw in the beginning. 12 hours, same thing. 18 hours, same thing. Three quarters of the day has passed, and all we have are these simple single-celled organisms. Then at about the 21st hour, in the space of about two minutes, boom, most of the major animal forms appear in the form that they currently have in the present. And many of them persist to the present, and we have them with us today. Less than two minutes out of a 24-hour period. That's how sudden the Cambrian explosion was. Wow. Boom. In the span of just two minutes in 24 hours, eh? That explosion must have taken place in the blink of an eye. The intelligent design proponent misrepresenting scientific knowledge is full of the Discovery Institute Jonathan Wells. And yes, that is the same intelligent design organization that wouldn't defend intelligent design under oath. Wells is also the author of the creationist book Icons of Evolution. There's just one tiny problem. If a 24-hour period represents 4 billion years, then 2 minutes would be about 6 million years. Yeah, that Cambrian explosion took place in the blink of an eye. Just to put 6 million years into perspective, that's the equivalent of about a mere 60 ice ages or so. That's about 1,000 times as old as the young Earth creationists think the universe is. I mean, it's about six million years ago when our ancestors were just starting to walk upright. But one thing is true. There was a Cambrian explosion. Darwin was well aware of it. He even openly wrote of it and stated how he considered it the single greatest objection to the theory of evolution. However, Charles Darwin was working 150 years ago when people didn't even know that matter was made up of atoms. Jonathan Wells is not, and some of the things Wells says here are so jaw-droppingly wrong that they have to go into the same category with Venom Fang X's statements about the Grand Canyon being formed at about five times the speed of sound. Most of the major animal forms appear in the form that they currently have in the present. Oh really? Most of the major animal forms appear in the form that they currently have in the present. And this is from a man who has two PhDs, one in molecular and cell biology from Berkeley and the other in religious studies from Yale. You see, the snappy answer you will usually get from an evolutionary biologist when asking him what would convince him that evolution is wrong is fossil bunnies in the Cambrian. So, Wells, if in the Cambrian explosion most of the major animal forms appear in the form they currently have in the present, where are the Cambrian fossils of bunnies, whales, bayan trees, chameleons, ants, turkeys, kangaroos, orchids, crocodiles, lions, elephants, bees, humans, spiders, etc., etc., etc.? What the senior fellow of the creationist organization, the Discovery Institute, is willfully ignoring is that every single creature from the Cambrian explosion was water-dwelling. The invasion of land happened about 100 million years after the Cambrian explosion. Most of the major animal forms appear in the form that they currently have in the present. And many of them persist to the present, and we have them with us today. What, you mean like Trilobites, Anomalocaris, Hallucigentia, and Hycuella? So why the Cambrian explosion? 
Firstly, it's necessary to make it clear that we do not have a comprehensive understanding of the origins of life on Earth, but this is far from saying that we don't know anything about it. For instance, the structure of almost all biomolecules, carbon nitrogen rich compounds with lots of hydrogen and not much oxygen, simply scream reducing atmosphere to the chemist. The one exception is the sugars, an integral part of both DNA and metabolism, which can be made by the reduction of carbon dioxide releasing in oxygen. This is of course a core reaction in photosynthesis today. We have an idea of the oxygen levels on the early Earth from iron chemistry. The reduced form of iron is pretty soluble in seawater. However, if you expose it to oxygen, it drops out of solution as essentially rust, leaving large geological banded structures. This happens in the rocks preceding the Cambrian explosion and signifies that the oxygen was becoming abundant in the Earth's atmosphere. So the stage is set. An organism that evolved the ability to utilize oxygen in metabolism would have a significant advantage. Oxygen is like rocket fuel to life. It makes multicellular life an exceptionally evolutionary favoured proposition. So what evidence we have suggests that for the first two and a half billion years of life on Earth is a bunch of chemical reactions in life changing the abundance of molecules on Earth. When the feedstocks are opportune, multicellular life takes off with a vengeance. This is far from Wells's intentionally misleading caricature that so if we start the clock then, our 24-hour clock, six hours, nothing but these simple single-celled organisms appear, the same sort that we saw in the beginning. 12 hours, same thing. 18 hours, same thing. Three quarters of the day has passed, and all we have are these simple single-celled organisms. Then at about the 21st hour, in the space of about two minutes, boom, most of the major animal forms appear in the form that they currently have in the present. The branching tree pattern of Darwin's theory is actually not seen anywhere in the fossil record unless we impose it with our own minds. Not seen anywhere. They not seen anywhere. It's actually not seen anywhere in the fossil record unless we impose it with our own minds.